Good evening and welcome back to Prime of My Life. It's Friday evening and this evening I'm having a thing. And it's a bit sort of convoluted, um, but some of you will possibly say it's Karen is wakening up. Um, some of you will possibly say it's the WEF. Um, we shall own nothing and be happy, I think it is. Um, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure, but I had a thing. I had a thing when I was sitting and I'd put the wood burner on and somewhere on the media it said, oh, they're going to stop wood burners. We need to stop wood burners. They're so polluting. And I got right insulted. And I was like, I'm sorry. Who's saying I need to stop a wood burner? My wee wood burner does not pollute nearly as much as these people in their private jets going from one side of the world to the other. And these people can be celebrities, these people can be politicians going to their climate change conference and they're all taking private jets. And don't even start me on how much that um, USA pre president, whoever they are, in that beast. And they ship that across the countries. I mean, that's just ridiculous. And we're supposed to be having a climate emergency. But it seems like it's us that's paying for the climate emergency. So where this concerns me is that the whole thing at the moment seems to be, oh, we need clean energy, which is electricity. Mm -hmm. OK, so that's supposed to be clean energy. We've just opened um, or had on standby the coal fired power stations. So... I don't particularly see our electrics as being that clean. But yes, if even if you say if we get to, you know, more wind farms, more solar panels, more whatever, uh, more hydroelectric dams. I quite like the hydroelectric dams. I think they're one of the cleanest. Um, however, if even if we get all them and we have cleaner energy, the UK does not own the energy companies in the UK. I did this years ago and I looked up who owned the energy companies and I don't think one of them is owned by the British government. Not gas, not electric, not anything. And the British government is paying other government's companies to come and supply our energy. So if there's a problem in a few years' time, who do you think they're going to look after? Their own country or this country where they're paying? I mean, we've already seen it by the amount the UK people have to pay extra um, last year when the energy crisis hit. Most of the European countries who own companies who supply the UK populace with energy in their own countries in Europe, they didn't have to pay nearly as much as we do because we subsidise their country's power. So, yeah, I'm not liking that for a start. I'm really not. Um, and, you know, the UK government is in charge of very little within the UK now. In fact, I think probably the only thing they're in charge of that is for the populace is the NHS, and we all know how they're doing with that. Um. But once I got on that sort of tangent, shall we say, so there I am, and I'm thinking, well, no, I'm I'm not willing to give up my wood burner because if my home then everything is electric, but other countries control the electric, what happens when it goes off? At least at the moment, if I have a power cut, I have the wood burner that can help heat. It can help cook. I mean, even if you're even if you don't have the wood burner, you know, you can always cook outside on the barbecue or something like that. But if all that's banned in the the name of clean air, then we're all going to be very, very dependent on this clean electric power. And I'm just not getting that. I mean, I'm not getting the fact of these electric cars with their lithium batteries. How much destruction does it take to make a lithium battery for the cars? 
that's ridiculous. There's also the thing of um, food production. We can't sustain ourselves in food production the way we are going just now. So we need to look at that as well. That's why I've started learning how to grow things. I'm not very good at it yet, but my seedlings are still going. And I have almost finished my planter, ready to put them in it. So fingers crossed. But anything you can even grow in your windowsills is going to be a bonus because we're going to struggle to feed ourselves. I mean, at the moment, the government, it, well, not even the government, the UK, it can't feed itself. It can't feed its own population. It can't house itself. It can't home people because it sold all its properties off to all the, the social housing that it had before. It sold all those off to people and it's not built half of what it needs in return. So we can't feed people. We can't house people. We can't keep people warm. Is this getting scary yet? Because it's starting to get scary to me. And I just, I'm, I mean, I'm just having a thing. Um, I'm just looking here and, yeah. So then you start looking at, okay, so they're doing all these, these things to say, all right, you need to walk, you need to cycle, we need to cut down our carbon footprint. Okay, but if you look at the size of the UK, teeny weeny weeny on a map compared to China or India and funnily enough there's some um, companies who are like oh yes we you know we use this and we're very very green we're very climate friendly apart from the bits that they outsource to China and India where they can barely see each other because of the smog see so that's not good but I mean where are we getting that the UK needs to cut down because the global impact of the UK cutting down is just non-existent when you have China and India belching out emissions. So there needs to be a bit of give and take here. And I think it needs to be that we need to stop, or our government needs to stop taking from us and expecting us to change the way we live while paying money to these other countries who are just doing what they want. So, yes, I'm thinking I need to future prep my life in general. So I need to future prep it so that I'm not reliant on electric. How glad am I? I mean, you've got no idea how absolutely grateful I am for the fact that I got rid of my big storage heaters two years ago and put in a wood burner because the electricity was already going up. I'd gone from paying £150 a month regularly for years. I'd already started hitting £200 a month. And that was two years ago. That was before any of the electricity payments increases came through. So I am so glad I got rid of them because it would have cost me a fortune. Um, so I've, I've got that, that's, that's the thing, but I want to have food stashed. I don't want to be reliant on having to go to the shops. Um, I don't want to be reliant on having to have a car. I want to be able to survive for at least maybe two or three weeks that I don't need to go and get anything just in case. Um, Obviously, being reliant a bit more is, is better, but that, I'm sort of, if I can do that, just in case something happens. But I'm really, really starting to get a bit, a bit irked, shall we say, about the way the government is going, we need to do this, we need to do that. Well, see, when they start doing that, when they stop driving their gas guzzlers, when they stop taking their private jets, and having their swimming pool seated and their stable seated and all that. See, once they start living the same kind of restrictions that they want us to live with, then I'll maybe take it on board. Until then, I am going to future-proof this house as best I possibly can. So yeah, that's my Friday night thing. I'm just, I'm just not liking this at all. Let's move everything to electric. But the UK doesn't own any of its own energy companies. 
So it's at the mercy of other companies, many of which are owned by foreign governments. Does that not tell you something? So, yes. Now, I am off to relax. It's a Friday night. I hope you're looking forward to a really good weekend. I certainly am. And I will catch you later.